Okay, so what I have here is a AeroSharp inverter. It's a solar inverter. It's a three kilowatt solar inverter that takes in um, solar panels, uh, a one and a half kilowatt solar panels into one of the inputs and then converts it to 240 volts AC and pumps it back into the grid via this switch. Um, I'm only, this is a three kilowatt inverter, but I'm only using one of the inputs. Now, this system has been, was installed about nine years ago, and my inverter developed a fault uh, last year, and it would not um, pump power back into the grid. And if you have a look here, there are, there's a fault light, there's a run light, and a power light. Uh, my unit had the fault light come on, so, um, and it has some sort of error here. Now, I looked on the internet to find out what the cause of the problem could be, and some suggested that uh, this unit has varistors inside. Uh, there's varistors for the AC input and for this, and they could, they, the varistors there, they um, stopped the surge, and that could have failed. Um, and as a result, the fuse internally blows. Um, now, if you know what you're doing, you can go on the internet and there's plenty of information. Um, so if, uh, if you're a type of person who's good at repairing these types of things, then you can do this yourself. Um, however, that was not the problem uh, with my inverter. Um, so in the end, I had to get the inverter repaired. And when I went to the internet, I couldn't find any information on how to get this unit repaired. Um, when I rang a solar shop or several solar shops, they all recommended replacing this inverter. Um, and the cost for, the cost varied from $1,000 for a good Wii inverter up to $2,000 for a German inverter fully installed. Now, the reason why the cost is high also is because um, when this inverter was installed nine years ago, there was no earth wire going to the solar panel. So when they'd put the new inverter in, if I had opted for that path, they would have to earth my solar panels. The reason for that is, is that uh, this, for safety regulations, however, this unit got away with not having an earth for the solar panels because this is a fully isolated uh, solar panel, uh, solar inverter. So it's got a big toroidal transformer in here. Um, and this whole unit weighs about 40 kilograms. Now I'm just going to show some photos of the inverter and if you go over here to the side you've got the heat sink on the top and I'm just going to zoom into the label so I'm just going to put this this way for people to see so I have got a 3 kilowatt um, solar inverter and if you have a look here it's uh, Shanghai AeroSharp Electric Technologies now the company went out of business um, and as a result I had to get this repaired independently so the inverter came with five year warranty and if you have a look it's a I've got the three kilowatt you can see their three kilowatt model um, however the same would apply to the smaller units so what I did was I had the solar inverter repaired and I had to search on the internet until I could find relevant information because it's not easy to find because every time when I search for uh, AeroSharp inverter fault I wasn't able to find much information. In the end I found this company here and it's called Inverter Service and the website is inverterservice.com.au and on there if you go to their uh, menu you will if you go to the web page and go to the service section or home you should be able to find relevant information on this particular brand of inverter uh, in the end it ended ended up costing me just under or around four hundred dollars just under so what I had to do was I had to turn off this inverter following this procedure and if you have a look, turn off the inverter AC main isolator and then the solar array. So here's the switch. And all I did was I just turned it like that, turned off. This is the AC one and then the DC one. Once that was done and the, I, because I was able to then disconnect by unscrewing this terminal here, I was able to disconnect this inverter. 
and the solar DC inputs. So in order to get them off, if you have a look, you've got these things you have to push. So one's a male connector and the other one's a female connector. So male, female. So if you have a look here, what I've got is you have to push down on this pin and that pin. And when you push down, uh, when you push down on these two pins, like so, and same with that, and you then can pull this connector out. With this one here, it's slightly different. You have to put the screwdriver inside there and there and push those pins. Um, and then you're able to remove, it's hard to see. Can, I'm just gonna pull down gently. You can see this little bit of a gap, that portion. And you can clearly see the two pins there with the screwdriver, you push down. And this one here, the join is there. So you have to push down on those two pins. So I disconnected this inverter, undid this one screw, and this is where you will need the help of two people because this particular unit is 40 kilograms and it's actually hooked onto the bracket if I go around this way. And it's hard to see. You may, oh, there you go, you can see it. There is a bracket um, on the wall there where it's, this unit just hangs off this bracket. So once again, undo that bolt and then you need two people because this particular inverter is 40 kilograms. I'm just gonna zoom out, 40 kilograms. So, and and then I had to put this into a box and the $400 and specify the address that was given on this inverter. I rang the person and he told me which address to send it to. So I put this inverter in a box, shipped it off and it got repaired and returned to me within two weeks. Uh, around $400 and I installed the unit and it works. Um, another place that you could try to get this repaired and I only found this afterwards is module repair. So they repair all sorts of uh, control boards in many different appliances including inverters, solar inverters, air conditioners, washing machines, um, evaporative coolers, ducted heating systems and so on. And their website is uh, oops, their website is modulerepair.com.au. So, but um, I went, I went with um, Inverter Service, and that's the website there. Now, so I should say that. Um, from what I can gather from this unit, um, the inverter got repaired and inside this unit, what you actually have is, if you if, if you were to remove these four bolts after these connectors have been disconnected, the unit has been left to sit for at least an hour. Inside you will have the transformer here, a whole bank of electrolytic capacitors. And above in here, there will be a control board just here. And below that control board is another board, which is a switch mode power supply. And that has electrolytic capacitors. Now, just to give you an idea of what a switch mode power supply looks like, I've got one here. So this here is a switch mode power supply out of another appliance and not in any way related to this solar inverter. And what actually happens with switch mode power supplies is that the electrolytic capacitors, I'm just gonna to point to what they are, these things here, um, they have electrolyte and they hold a charge and electrolytic capacitors have a if i can just zoom in they have operating temperature and this this particular one is 105 degrees so if this capacitor this tall one here was uh, operating at 105 degrees celsius it will only last 2000 hours every 10 degrees lower in operating temperature say for example 95 degrees the capacitor will last 4,000 hours. If you reduce the temperature by another 10 degrees, the electrolytic capacitor's life doubles. So, and this particular inverter that I've got here, um, on a hot summer's day, in the internal temperature, by reading the display, indicates 60 degrees Celsius. So electronics inside are running at 60 degrees Celsius. Now, over several years, over, well, in my case, nine years, the capacitors, just like these ones here, um, dry up due to the high operating temperature of the inverter and the electrolytic capacitors dry up and as a result the power supply circuit inside this unit 
um, is unable to provide power to the electronics to run the inverter. And I should say that goes with many appliances. When you think of any electronic appliance, they all contain something called a switch mode power supply. Gone are the days of those big transformers that you would find in an electronic power supply. They are actually small switch mode power supplies. The transformers are very small, high frequency switching, and it's got a lot of electronic components which age. And we're talking in the order like between five to 10 years, depending on how hot they run. If the electronics is running at a very cool temperature, say like in a microwave power supply or some other unit, then they can last a long time. However, in the case of my solar inverter, um, because the inverter runs hot, um, on a hot um, that reduces the life of the electronic components. So finally, um, I've got the inverter repaired and it's working. So instead of sending this unit to landfill, um, it's working and uh, I'm happy with that. Finally, um, if you want to extend your solar inverter um, life, like if I want to extend the life of this inverter, I could, if I wanted to, install some computer cooling fans on these heat sinks just above like this. Um, the fans are only like $10 connected to like a 12 volt power supply. And I've seen some people new, uh, on the internet do this and that's one way to extend the life of the inverter by adding some simple low voltage cooling fans which cool down the electronics and in doing so you increase the life of any um, solar inverter um, or any electronic appliance for that matter depending on how hot they run.